Hi everyone, welcome to my video where today we're going to be talking about congruent arcs and perpendicular chords. Let's get started. So first thing says minor arcs are congruent if and only if their corresponding cards, chords are congruent. And the converse is also true. So let's take a look here. Okay, so if those two chords were congruent, if AD is congruent to BC, then that arc AD is congruent to arc BC. And the converse is true. If the two arcs are congruent to each other, then those two chords are going to be congruent to each other. Pretty simple comparison back and forth. Now, perpendicular chords. This is super, super important. It says, if a radius or diameter is perpendicular to a chord, then that chord and its arc are both bisected. So it says here, if HF is congruent to EG, if those two are perpendicular to each other, so that means we're going to have a right angle there, then this um, chord EG gets bisected. It gets cut into two congruent halves. And the same thing with this arc EG, that also gets cut in half into two congruent halves. So it would mean that EJ is congruent to GJ, those segments. And then arc EF is congruent to arc GF. Anytime you have a perpendicular radius to a chord or a diameter to a chord, that special situation happens. And now something we also know just exists anyway, but this is going to lead us into the problems that we have to be able to do, is that if I was to connect the center of K to E and also to G, now those are congruent to each other. And it's not by any other special rule except that they're both a radius. So and any all radii are congruent to each other. But notice what you actually create once you have that radius there. You create some right triangles, and we're going to need those right triangles to go forward. So I'm listing that there, that those are congruent to each other, but we already knew they were congruent to each other, but we're going to need that going forward. All right, let's take a look. These are all about congruent chords and arcs. So first one, if uh, arc AC is congruent to arc BD, so AC is congruent to BD, and segment AC has a measure of 3x plus 4, and segment BD has a measure of 5x, find the length of AC. Well, if these two arcs are congruent to each other, then their chords are congruent to each other. So that means I would set 3x plus 4 equal to 5x. And if I do that, and I go ahead and solve this basic equation, I end up getting x. Now, AC is equal to 3 times 2 plus 4, so AC has a value of 10, which would also mean BD has a value of 10 as well. Next one. If segment GF has a measure that's equal to segment EF, and arc GE is 80, find arc GF. Okay, so these are congruent, uh, congruent segments. Their measures are equal, so that means these arcs are congruent to each other. Okay, so GF is congruent to EF, and I'm given GE is 80. Well, I would need to figure out what GF is, and I know they're congruent to each other, so 360 minus that 80 would leave me with an arc measure of 280, and if they're congruent to each other, <clears throat> I'm going to cut that 280 in half, and that would be the measure of arc GF is 140. Next one, if arc HI is congruent to arc KJ and the measure of IJ is equal to the measure of KH, so that means those arcs are congruent and they equal 90, find IJH, IJH, that entire major arc. So if that's 90 and that's 90 from our information that we're given and we're told that these two arcs are congruent to each other, well, those add up to 180. 360 minus 180 is 180. And then let's think about that. That would mean that this segment here is 90. So then 90 plus 90 plus 90, the whole way around would be 270. Last one. If arc LO is congruent to arc MN, so these arcs are congruent to each other, which means those chords are congruent to each other, and the measure of LO, that arc, is 95, find X. Okay, so if LO is 95 and LO is congruent to MN, then this segment MN would also have to be um, 
then that arc would be 95. Then the central angle that goes along with MN would need to be the same. So if that's 95 and then that's 95, then my central angle is also 95. All right, perpendicular. So this last tab, this bottom part was about if you have a radius or a diameter and it is perpendicular to a chord, then this chord, this part here, this chord is bisected and the arc is also bisected. So here it says, if the measure of a arc AB is 70, find the measure of arc BD. So if AB is 70, and I see here that this chord is bisected, and if the chord is bisected, then that tells me that the chord is perpendicular to the radius, okay? So it's the converse. All right, if this is 70 and that's bisected, then that means that this arc, AD, is also 70, and BD is just the sum of those two arcs. 70 plus 70 is 140. Okay, if KI is 6, FG is 5, find GH. Okay, so I see here that the arcs are bisected. So if the arcs are bisected, that tells us that the radius is actually, or the full diameter is bisecting this chord. So that's gonna tell me that there is a right angle there, that they're perpendicular, okay? The fact that these were bisected told me that they were congruent and that's a 90 degree angle, same thing here. If I see that that's already bisected that arc, and that means that's a 90 degree angle. Okay, that's going through the radius, that's bisecting it. So then I would be able to say, well, okay, so if this entire segment is six, then this little segment, KH, is three. I need to find GH. I know KG because if FG is five, which is a radius, then KG is also five. And now look what I have going on here. What do you see I've created? A right triangle. And what do we know how to do to solve for a missing side of a right triangle? Pythagorean theorem. So KH is three, KG is five. GH would be one of the legs of the right triangle. So Three squared, a leg plus a GH, or you can give it some other variable like Y, equals five squared. Nine plus GH squared is 25, GH squared is 16, and G would have to be four. It's one of those beautiful Pythagorean triples, three, four, five. Next one, if LO equals 12 and MP equals 13, find MO. Okay. So MO is actually not part of the right triangle. It's part of the entire radius. But if I know LO is 12, and it says MP is 13, and MP is a radius, but it's kind of in like a not fun spot. So let me make that same radius here to make a right triangle. Let's think about this. I can use my Pythagorean theorem to find OP. That's not what I need, I need MO. So if I use Pythagorean theorem in this right triangle to find OP, then since it's part of the entire radius, once I have that value, I would just do 13 minus that value to get MO. So 12 squared plus OP squared equals 13 squared. That's going to bring us to getting OP is 5. And then if OP is 5 and the entire length is 13, then 13 minus 5 gives me that MO, which is 8. Last one, if the measure of arc RS is 120, find the measure of RSQ, so that major arc. Now, notice we were shown that these uh, two segments were congruent from that chord, or we're showing that they're congruent here. We don't have those markers, but we are told that they're both equal to four. So that means that these two arcs are congruent to each other. Um, if RS is 120, then this is 60 because it's out of a semicircle, 180 degrees. And if these two arcs are congruent to each other, then not only is QR equal to 60, but QT is also equal to 60 because those arcs would have to be the same. TS is at 120 because then I'm still continuing this semicircle from Q to S. It says find RSQ. So 120 plus 120 plus 60 gives me 300. I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.